welcome to Rutgers Around the World, a special six-episode series celebrating the university's international history and its connection with the global community. We bring you this program as part of our 250th anniversary celebration. Hi, I'm Gabriela Millian. And I'm Bruno Ferreira. Rutgers maintains these relationships through its GAIA centers. GAIA stands for Global Advancement and International Affairs. In this episode, we'll focus on Rutgers' relationships throughout Asia and the Pacific and how these connections translate into opportunities for all members of our university community. Here's undergraduate student and reporter Preeta Sinha with more. Thanks, Gabriella. Rutgers is home to many departments and units dedicated to Asian and Asian-related studies and topics. And the university's rich history with the continent can once again be traced back to more than 150 years ago. Rutgers has extensive ties with Asia dating back to the 1860s, when the first international students came from Japan. Since then, the number of Asian students and scholars that come to Rutgers has helped shape students' global competency across all locations. Being an education institution, we want our students to be culturally, globally competent in dealing with other countries and other cultures. The uh, office serves uh, over 1,500 international students, scholars, and their dependents. The top countries are China, India, and South Korea. We have a number of Chinese students and Taiwanese students. Um, we also have a number of students from India. Rutgers creates a nurturing environment for these students, as well as curriculum centered on the Asia-Pacific region. As part of the mission for Rutgers China Office, we have a Chinese language department. This is only one of the two in the state of New Jersey. And we also see a student has expressed increasing interest on a variety of topics related to China. South Asia includes India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, the Maldives, and Afghanistan. And within our South Asian Studies program, we expand that also to include Tibet. This program promotes a greater understanding of South Asian history, language, religion, and cultures. We offer a large range of language and literature courses at uh, MSL. Those include languages and literatures from South Asia. Faculty and alumni connections in Asia have led to strong programs, partnerships, and an ongoing exchange of ideas. Well, the National Institutes of Health under the Fogarty program uh, have international training and research in environmental and occupational health centers. And so Rutgers was fortunate to have one of those centers. Ours is based in Bangkok at Chulalongkorn University. We take Rutgers faculty over to run workshops and train. We bring students here to spend time in our labs. Rutgers Business School is the very first U.S. business school entered the China market. We started offering our executive MBA program in Shanghai and Beijing in early 1990s. Rutgers took part in 2014 in a historic U.S. higher education delegation that went to Myanmar. The initiative brought two librarians from Myanmar here to Rutgers for a short study tour. Since 2007, we've had a relationship with the Documentation Center of Cambodia. We've had students and faculty go there. We've had staff come from there and study. Rutgers has research collaborations with educational institutions, NGOs, and even governments in Asia. The project we're doing with the Seoul Metropolitan Government is a way to help people around the world, governments around the world, understand the best practices that come out of Seoul. Since about 2004, we've been doing the project with Japan and the University of Shizuoka on clinical training experiences in nutrition. Over time, we transition to primarily doing full web-based sessions. The top 15 universities in South Korea assign agreement with us and we are exchanging faculty and students. These partnerships are making an impact around the world. My research in Indonesia primarily focuses on how nutrition, or nutritional intake, influences health in wild orangutans. So the US Agency for International Development provides scholarships for young Filipinos to come to the United States. 
to train here at Rutgers or other institutions. The Documentation Center of Cambodia is a very important partner for us. The trials in Cambodia, of which Professor Hinton was just giving expert testimony, is considered the Nuremberg trials of the generation related to violence in the Khmer Rouge. It was a project uh, in which we worked in the displaced people's camps to work on getting the high school students who had missed an integral part of their education. I worked with over 50 different universities, presidents as well as um, professors within these 50 universities across Pakistan to work on their own research in social sciences and education reform. As a Peace Fellow in Thailand, much of our study there was looking at media and media's impact in situations of conflict. So here at Rutgers, I teach a course called Media Studies. So I was very easily able to bring back what I learned. And students can immerse themselves in the study of the continent by engaging with local communities or studying abroad. Southeast stands for South Asian Total Health Initiative. And the idea of this program is to promote the culturally sensitive health care and then to reduce the health uh, disparities. We decided to have a service learning program in Thailand that's based around health and NGOs and food. The International Leadership Exchange is our capstone experience within our programming calendar. For our India trip, we are focused more on women and uh, gender uh, studies, and we also work with a lot of kids. It allows students to engage local leadership in a global setting. I recently had the opportunity to speak with Rutgers alum Unji Kim, Skyping in from her home in South Korea. Here's what she had to say. Hi, Unji, welcome to the program. Good to see you. You're currently a features producer for KBS World Radio in South Korea. Tell us about your work there. So uh, KBS World is the name of the channel, uh, the radio channel that I work for, and we produce programs in 11 languages. So as an English features producer, I basically manage all the shows produced in English that's not hard news. So that includes documentaries, talk shows, mu music programs, and interviews. And how did your Rutgers education prepare you for your career? So my experience at Rutgers and basically being immersed in that diverse community helped me get a sense of um, global perspective. So I think compared to a lot of other people, I do, I am very sensitive to different cultures out there, different people out there. And I think that makes me a better, like a well-rounded producer when I make programs. And what impact did being a Douglas Residential College student have on the way you look at the world? Um, so I was able to communicate with many, many women who had very women empowering thoughts and um, who are very interested in various issues that matter much, very much in the world. And I am able to bring those kind of perspectives when I produce shows and when I think about what shows to produce. And um, basically it plays a huge role in the general role that I have. Well, Unji, a producer is a leader. Uh, I just want to know, how did Rutgers help you develop your leadership skills? So um, a lot of the things that I learned taking on our leadership roles at Rutgers and also at Douglas is that um, you should not be afraid to lead and that you should be a go-getter and achieve what your team needs or what your group of members need. And I think the fact that I learned that as well as that I have practice that during my college years helps me a lot in terms of working with a whole team of writers, MCs, and sometimes fellow producers. Lindsay, thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you. As a recent Rutgers graduate, it's great to know that our training can lead to employment opportunities all over the world. It sure is. Now let's go to China, where Rutgers has strong programs and partnerships throughout the country. Here's more. Rutgers China office was created back in 2011 as a uh, university presidential initiative. It highlights Rutgers University's uh, commitment to internationalization and uh, engagement with China. Rutgers has relationships with 70 universities in China. We have our strongest relationship with Jilin University that's been active for over 30 years. From this relationship, we have grown out many productive collaborations. For example, this uh, Confucius Institute, a uh, a hub for Chinese language teaching and a cultural exchange. And we have these sister centers, Center for Chinese Studies here and the Center for American Studies at Jilin University. An example of a robust relationship between Rutgers and the South China University of Technology is a Scott 
Rutgers Innovation College. And that college has been very successful in terms of uh, creating opportunities uh, for the student exchange between the two universities. A 2 plus 2 program is a dual degree or a double degree program. It is when students from one institution spend the first two years of their studies at their home institution and then the second two years of their studies here at Rutgers and they graduate with a degree from both their home institution and Rutgers. Our 2 plus 2 program has grown from one institution to now we have SCUT, we have China Agriculture University, Nanjing Agriculture University, Shanghai Jiao Tong. We work closely with Renmin University in China, People's University. We do an international conference, which we founded with them about 12 years ago. This Rutgers uh, China Initiative Grant is the grant for faculty and staff to promote a relationship between universities in the U.S. and universities in the People's Republic of China. Another um, interesting venture that our business school started is a program that is actually on the campus of um, Northeast Normal University in China. Students start at Northeast Normal in, in this institute that we call Runnin for two years, after which they, um, depending on performance, will have the opportunity to transfer here to Rutgers University, Newark. We created something called the Conversation Cafe, where students uh, participate as conversation facilitators and lead activities in English, and community members come in and they can practice. We have a Mandarin Conversation Cafe that we run once a week. Our school also have a student elective medical Mandarin to teach the student to use um, different language to interview patients in New Brunswick. We host um, between 10 and 15 students from Jiangyang University each summer. We actually do it jointly with the um, program in American Language Studies at Rutgers. So the students get trained in American language, American culture, and they get trained also in, in basics of biotechnology and biochemistry. Rutgers Around the World reporter Preeta Sinha recently Skyped with Rutgers partner Dr. Zheng, the director of the Office of Global Engagement at Jilin University. Here's that interview. Dr. Zheng, thanks so much for joining us from China. Thank you. My pleasure. Could you please tell us about Jilin University's partnership with Rutgers University? Sure. Uh, Jilin University and Rutgers University has got the uh, close connections during the past over three decades. And from last year, we were so excited that we have accepted the uh, ideas to set up the uh, graduate student uh, forum. Students from uh, both sides have participated in the activities of the forum. So this is a quite wide range collaboration uh, between the two universities. We are, pr we are proud of that. Great. So why do you think these type of partnerships are important and how do they benefit both the students and faculty at both universities? Um, actually, the two universities have uh, shared many things in common. For example, the wide range of disciplines. We offer the uh, natural sciences, humanities, social sciences, engineering, agricultural sciences, medical sciences, geosciences, and etc. So we know that we share the uh, much in common in the different disciplines. The third thing we think it, it is important that the leadership from both sides have shared the uh, education mission. Administrators from both sides have set up a uh, close link to each other, and the faculty members in uh, language, uh, the English language as the second language teaching from both sides have already organized the two training programs. We see the great potential in the dual degrees and the faculty exchange and student, student mobility. That is the uh, uh, most important strategic partnership for Jilin University. And I understand that you have various events on campus, such as Rutgers University Week. So can you tell us a little bit about that? OK, sure. Uh, in 2013, in May, we have organized the uh, Rutgers Week at Jilin University. During that time, we were proud that students participated in the different lectures and also the different face-to-face -face meetings with the delegates from Rutgers. And during that time, we opened the American Studies Center at Jilin University. And uh, uh, more than 20 colleges and uh, offices have participated in the activities 
that is the exciting new beginning of the strategic partnership between the two universities. Great. Thanks once again for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. That's my pleasure. Thank you. From China, we explore the many opportunities available for cutting-edge international collaborative research involving both students and faculty with another of Rutgers' key partners, this time in India. The Rutgers India Initiative leverages existing strengths at Rutgers focused on India across the various schools and to develop strategic partnerships with leading research and teaching institutions in India. The Obama Singh Knowledge Initiative relates to the India Initiative. It was an award for um, $250,000 aimed at building Rutgers ties with centers of higher education in India. One of the longer term outcomes has been a memorandum of understanding with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. We successfully co-organized with the Hindi Sangam of New Jersey and the government of India a very successful conference on Hindi in which we brought people from all over the region but particularly within uh, the state of New Jersey which is after all kind of a hub for South Asian culture and population within the U.S. We've developed a number of international partnerships with um, universities from around the world, including the SIT in India. This is through our computer science program. The program is a two plus two program where the students go to the SIT for two years and then continue here at Rutgers Camden. So I have a project funded by Gaia, which is between Rutgers and an institute in Mumbai, India. The idea there was to, to make uh, healthy snacks from quinoa, uh, because as you know, quinoa is a vegetarian source of protein. So uh, we wanted to see how the local population in India responds to quinoa. I'm very interested in really understanding forms of urban transition that have contributed to large-scale displacement in India's largest cities. Last year I received a grant from the Gaia Centers. They're trying to look at comparative patterns of suburban expansion in different regions of India. Hindu mythology was what we focused on in India. Studying abroad has definitely helped me see that it's good to be out of your comfort zone. That's the way that we all grow. The International Leadership Exchange Program in India was life-changing. We visited a school to learn about education inequalities and gender inequality. So we worked with nonprofits and NGOs that sought to combat those issues. I chose Rutgers because, you know, the name speaks for itself. It's a big, internationally known university. It offers cultural diversity, plus it has got really great uh, research programs, and I just love this place. Joining me is Dr. Susie Kim, a professor of Korean history in the Department of Asian Languages and Cultures, and Dr. Rick Lee, director of the Center for Global Programs and Relations at the Gaia Centers. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Kim, could you please describe your research and how teaching and civic engagement are interconnected? Sure. So um, my research focuses on Korea's very early history, particularly North Korea from 1945 to 1950. And those years are critical because it's the five years leading up to the Korean War, which was fought um, from 1950 to 1953. Um, and for those, I mean, I, I don't think very many people know this fact, but the Korean War remains technically still ongoing because it ended with an armistice. And Korea, as you know, remains divided between the North and South. So last year, um, 2015, was the um, 70th anniversary of Korea's division. And so um, a group of women basically decided that it was about time that we brought the division of Korea and the Korean War to an official end. And so um, Gloria Steinem um, and two women peace Nobel laureates, and uh, 27 other women, including myself, we decided to walk across the DMZ as a symbol of, as a gesture towards calling for peace on the Korean Peninsula. That it, you know, the 70 years of division is, is long enough, and it's time for world leaders to pay attention to the fact that Korea needs to be reunified. And this was the Women's Peace Walk, correct? That's right. And 
How long did it take to organize? And could you clarify the DMZ for people out there who might not know what that is? The DMZ is, is basically um, the acronym for the Demilitarized Zone. And it's one of the most heavily fortified militarized borders in the world today that divides the north and south um, of Korea. Um, last year, May 24th, um, it's celebrated every year, but May 24th is International Women's Peace Day for um, disarmament. And so we chose that day to basically have um, the world leaders, um, the women basically walk across the DMZ. Dr. Lee, how does the Gaia Centers assist faculty like Dr. Kim um, in realizing their research goals? Because Dr. Kim had a great story with us in Korea herself. Yeah, so with the Center for Global Programs and Relations, we actually have two primary objectives. On the programs part, uh, we provide seed funding for faculty, including Professor Kim, as well as we provide us a series of programming. And on the relations part, we also um, uh, manage uh, our partnerships with a, a number of universities around the world. So one of our uh, main issues and in, 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 uh, main initiatives in providing progr uh, programming funds is the Gaia grants. And we offer uh, a series of grants for faculty at the tenure track at the tenure, tenure level. And this past year, Professor Kim, along with various other colleagues in the School of Arts and Sciences, submitted a proposal to uh, called um, Global Asia Studies, which draws on the strengths of Rutgers faculty in the School of Arts and Sciences uh, to think through uh, across disciplinary boundaries, so not only history, but also literature um, and also geography uh, and various other fields, but also thinking from different geographical locations. So the study of South Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, 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 Central Asia, and they're going to be meeting, I think, every, for the next two years, uh, about 10 to 12 meetings, and they're going to be rethinking, drawing from each other's resources, inviting faculty from various other schools to really rethink what the role is for, a for Asia studies here at Rutgers. Well, that's fascinating work. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Indonesia is a Southeast Asian nation comprised of thousands of volcanic islands, and it's home to a culturally and linguistically diverse population. Here's undergraduate student and reporter Christian Tang with more. Thanks, Gabriella. It's also home to innovative research in a variety of fields and disciplines. Let's take a look at the partnerships Rutgers is cultivating there. Indonesia is a rich place to do research. It's a rich place for training and education. We think that Indonesia is a fertile place to sort of go out and start to do some work. These are boxes and boxes of orangutan urine samples. My research takes place at the Chuanan Orangutan Research Station in central Kalimantan, Indonesia. Orangutans are really unique. In the wild, what we're finding is that during periods of high fruit availability, um, when they can get really high caloric intake, they put on fat and they build up these fat reserves. And then when fruit is really scarce, we find that they utilize these fat reserves for energy. And so this is what we're studying. Universitas Nacional Jakarta, abbreviated as UNAS, and Rutgers, we received a um, USAID partnership across the Pacific Grant. And this is a large grant for training students both from Rutgers and Indonesia, side by side at my field station in central Kalimantan. And the DICTI grant that we received from the Director at General of Higher Education in Indonesia is a grant aimed at Indonesian institutions. So UNAS, Universitas Nacional, and our newest collaborators, UNPAR, so that's the Universitas of Palankaraya, received this grant for training. Rutgers was part of a uh, new partnership for marine conservation, cultural preservation, and educational capacity building all over Eastern Indonesia. We're interested in helping the Banda Island community preserve the culture, the language, and the, the heritage of the region. So this Banda Island project, we're proposing to become a world heritage site. And Rutgers is actively involved with people from Indonesia in developing that relationship. Not long ago, we were visited by a delegation from Universitas Erlanga in Indonesia, and they met with a number of units uh, across campus. Since then, there's a number of uh, potential projects that faculty here at Rutgers are working on with colleagues at Erlanga. Our summer study abroad course is primates ecology and conservation in Indonesia. Students learn how to monitor primate behavior. The nice thing about this course that makes it really unique is it's half Rutgers students and half Indonesian students. 
which is really nice because you get this amazing kind of integration of two very different cultures coming together. Next, we spice things up as we explore the Banda Islands, once known as the world's sole source of nutmeg, and today valued for its environmental, cultural, and historic importance. Since 2014, the CHAPS program at Rutgers University is involved in the nomination of the Banda Islands as a mixed site on UNESCO's World Heritage List. This site visit with the nomination team explored the outstanding cultural and natural values on the famous Spice Islands, once the only place on Earth where nutmeg grew. These values include remnants of colonial forts, nutmeg plantations, and the unique biodiversity of this marine environment. An important place for endangered species, such as the sea turtle. Nowhere else on Earth has coral reef grown as rapidly as here. The nomination also includes intangible heritage, such as the Chakalele warrior dance, which describes the village oral history. As the oral history of each village is different, the dance movements vary in each village. A second part of the intangible heritage is the Kora Kora warrior boat race, during which the oral history of the town is sung on the beat of the drum to indicate the rhythm for the rowers. We conducted a workshop to include the local community at the Islands University, where we were welcomed with the handkerchief dance. We also attended the opening of the computer lab, which is generously sponsored by Rutgers University and the World Bank. We organized a community mapping exercise, where we asked the community what they believe are the most important places on the island. During our last evening, we witnessed the real Chakalele performance in all its splendor. The first step of identifying the values are made and we are looking forward to completing the nomination dossier in the upcoming years. We're joined by Bernard Barola, Executive Director of the U.S.-Indonesia Joint Council on Higher Education Partnership. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Could you please describe your organization and what it does? Uh, sure. Uh, the Joint Council was founded uh, just over five years ago uh, in a response, really, to President Yudhoyono of Indonesia visiting President Obama in a state visit and proposing greater uh, ties in higher education uh, between the U.S. and Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia being the third most populous country, uh, large democracy, large economy, uh, there was definitely a desire to have greater ties in education so Americans and Indonesians would know one another better. And you were involved in Rutgers' strategic plan to make the Banda Islands a UNESCO heritage site. Why was this so important? The Banda Islands, as you saw from the video, uh, it really is a, a beautiful archipelago, small archipelago of islands, of course famous by being the Spice Islands, but they're also located in the Coral Triangle, which is the world's remaining, one of the world's remaining pristine areas of ocean where coral flourish. And through a UNESCO designation, it would really help protect that coral so that you don't get overdevelopment in the future uh, and we can have that you know, beautiful location preserved for future generations. Um, but there's also a tie-in with Rutgers uh, that is kind of unique about the Banda Islands. And, and that tie is, is actually next year is going to celebrate the 350th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Breda. And the Treaty of Breda ended the Dutch-Anglo War back in the 1600s. And what this resulted in, which brings things a little closer to home here in New Jersey, was the Dutch and the British swapping land to end the war. Uh, that is where the British got Manhattan and parts of New Jersey and New York. And the Dutch, we got the Banda Islands from the British. So you have this nice sort of play next year, the 350 years, where you're seeing um, sort of recognizing the ties that have already existed for 350 years between this area and the Banda Islands. Fascinating. And what future goals do you have for the U.S.-Indonesia Joint Council? We will continue to work with uh, Rutgers as well as other U.S. universities and Indonesian institutions to continue to build partnerships, sustainable partnerships, in research, in collaboration, in faculty and student exchanges, so that uh, there continues to be strong U.S.-Indonesia ties in education. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today. Thank you very much. That concludes this episode of our program. Please join us next time for another look at Rutgers Around the World, where we'll explore how Rutgers is preparing for tomorrow's global future today. I'm Bruno Ferreira. And I'm Gabriela Millian. Thanks for watching.